Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. I'm your host, Sharon Bornholt, and I'm so happy you're tuning in today. Today, I want to talk about using social media for marketing and branding your real estate investing business. This is a big topic because having a strategy for marketing and branding your real estate investing business is not only necessary, but it will likely be responsible for your success or failure of your business long term. So with this in mind, I want to dive into this topic today. Now, I've said it a lot of times, but marketing and branding are like a couple. You need to be doing both at the same time. And marketing is how you get leads, but branding is why they choose you. So they are truly a couple. These are the things that you need to get leads in your door and the things that you do so they will choose you. So you'll be the obvious choice when it comes to choosing who to work with. Now, you might be wondering, how does social media play into all of this? Well, social media helps you to build trust. It can generate leads and that potentially become deals. Adding social media to your existing traditional marketing uh, channels is just one more layer of marketing that you do. So traditional channels, you might be doing uh, direct mail or pay-per-click or cold calling, whatever that is you do. Those are your traditional marketing channels. And then social media marketing is a layer that you add on to that. One thing that is unique about social media marketing is that people will like, share, and comment on your post. So they often get a lot of reach on social media. So I want to go back just a little bit, though, and talk about what actually is branding. So people think it's the physical aspects of branding, and those are important. Your logos, your fonts, your colors, all of those things help people to identify you uh, as opposed to the next real estate investor. But branding is more about how you make people feel. So how do people feel after they've had an interaction with you? Are they feeling like they trust you? Do they feel like you did a great job after the deal? Are they likely to recommend you? So it's how they feel about you. And more importantly, it's what they say about you after they leave the room. So this goes into referrals and networking and that sort of thing. Now, your brand awareness or your brand identity is the face of your business. And when this is done properly, it establishes trust, loyalty, it builds credibility, and it makes people want to do business with you. So it makes them want to choose you over the next person. And that's why you need to focus on it. Now, your customer experience also plays a huge role in marketing and in establishing a brand. And that's across all platforms, social media, your direct mail, and in every other way. Your customer experience is what happens when you actually get a seller to call you. And it actually starts with your marketing piece. Then they might call you. You would have a conversation with them. They might reach out online. It's the same thing. It's that second touch point generally. The next thing would be what happens when you go to the house, when you visit the property, when you make the offer, and at the closing, and even after the deal is done. Remember that this is all how you get referrals. It's the little things that count. So your customer experience, what happens at each touch point as they move through your business and they move from a prospect to a lead to possibly a deal, every piece of that counts. And I'm going to be going into more detail in, in that piece of it over the upcoming weeks and months. Now, I wanted to talk about millennials for a second because you just can't leave them out of the equation. Millennials make up the largest group of home buyers uh, in, my, in most areas and across the country. When it comes to investors, they are a large part of the uh, younger investors in my area too. So millennials pay a big part in this whole big picture. They spend a lot of time on social media, both creating content and in consuming content. Social media can bring attention to your business to these specific groups of people. Now, remember that people of all groups create, uh, spend a lot of time on social media. It's not just millenn millennials. But you want to do, as I said, you want to combine social media 
with traditional marketing and with networking. And you wanna step away from your computer screen and meet some people. You wanna to go to your local RIA, you may want to attend events, but when you are interacting with people on social media, a long-term goal should be to build a relationship of some sort with these people. Now, people ask all the time, where do I start with my social media presence? Where do I start with building this presence on social media? First of all, I would recommend that you carve out a niche. Carve out uh, a space for you where you do something better or differently than other people. So what do you do better th than your competition? But more importantly, what do you do differently that makes people want to choose you? You want to be different. So different is always better than better. You don't want to ever be in the situation where you're only competing on, on price. And this is where branding comes into play with all your marketing, including social media. So first of all, whether you're a wholesaler, a rehabber, landlord, doesn't matter. What do you specialize in? And it might be something as simple as I have the most hassle-free closings. I have the best first impression with people. So you want to hone in on what you do better. You know, for me, I specialize in probates and marketing and branding. Those are areas of interest to me. And I've kind of built my my business around those three major things. Now, that doesn't mean that I haven't done all of the other things. It just means that I've carved out this niche for myself. So carve out your niche. Determine what you do better and differently than other people. So it's, it's important to establish yourself as the go-to expert in your area. Maybe you're a great acquisition manager. Maybe you are the best wholesaler in your area. You have more deals. So figure out what that is and understand that on social media, social media has brag value, as I like to call it. You get to showcase your talents and your, your business as it uh, makes you different than other people. You get to showcase this on social media without ever bragging. You simply just share what you do you're going to provide information on what you do. Now, how do you use this social media to, to build an advantage when it comes to marketing and branding? We'll just call it that. Number one, first of all, you need to determine where people hang out. You have to be where your people hang out, and that will be different for different demographics. That will be different for different businesses. Facebook is a great place to be. Now, Google says that Facebook is the most popular um, social media network for both men and women. The average or median age for people on Facebook is 40 and a half. That's the median age. However, people 35 to 44 make up the biggest population of it, but 65% of the people are over 35. So that's a very rock solid demographic. Now, when I look on Facebook, there are a lot of people much older than that. You're not going to find too many really young people using yeah, teenagers, college students. You're not going to find too many of them using Facebook. When it comes to LinkedIn, I think of LinkedIn and I think a lot of people do as more of a business to business place. You should have a presence on LinkedIn. Uh, the, the ages um, and the demographics are about the same for, for LinkedIn. Now, Instagram is huge now. Instagram attracts a younger demographic, and it's based around beautiful image, imagery. So no matter what your uh, niche is, your, no matter what you specialize in your strategy, whether you're a wholesaler or rehabber, doesn't matter. You would want to showcase your brand, showcase your marketing on Instagram through your imagery. And it's important that those images are branded. And I'll tell you in a minute how you can do that. Um, Instagram, as I said, attracts a younger audience. Same thing is for TikTok. It's a video-based platform that attracts young people. And there are some successful real estate investors using it. It's not for everybody. The same thing for Twitter. I know people that use Twitter, they use it a lot, but you're limited to 280 characters to get your message across. 
it's not so much of an image-based platform, but images are important. If you're on Twitter, you're going to have to spend a fair amount of time uh, engaging with these people, or it's not going to be of any value to you. Pinterest is a visual platform and people use it for inspiration. Pinterest is a big search engine and it has over 80 million users. So if you can crack the code on that one, then uh, that would be a benefit to your business. What I have found is that because people use it for inspiration, it doesn't so much uh, bring leads to you. It doesn't so much bring in deals, but it can build brand awareness. So that's it for the major platforms. Now, number two has to speak to content. And make no mistake, you need to be creating some kind of content. But we're going to put that in the context of social media today. So first would be to be deliberate about your content. What types of content can you post and you should you post on social media? Well, there are tips. You can post articles. You can post a day in the life type of things, what you do in your daily life, such as look at property, walk through properties, those sorts of things. You can post about your latest rehab or rental. You can post about how you got your latest wholesale deals. You can post stories. People love stories, but only 20% of your content should ever be salesy type of content. Um, as far as marketing your business, as far as getting deals, getting leads in the door. So there's a ratio of one to five. For every uh, five posts you post should be, they should be for the consumer. We'll say that. They should be something that's of value to them. An article, uh, something like that. Success stories, things like that. Um, so, and then 1%, one out of five would be sales type things. The next thing that you want to focus on is testimonials and success stories. Those are very powerful. When you work with a seller or you sell a property to an end buyer, always try to get a, get a testimonial. If you happen to be co coaching people along the way, then be sure to get success stories. They are so very important. So be sure to get success stories. Number three would be to set up a Facebook group. This is a great way to bring people into your world to tell them what you do and how you do it. You don't have to spend a lot of time in there, but you do have to be consistent. So set up a Facebook group to find more of the people you're trying to attack, attract. Now, if you're creating long form content like I often do in the form of blog posts or a podcast, you can cut, cut those up into snippets you can take out quotes, you can take out audio clips, you can do all of this to drive traffic back to your website. So let's suppose for a minute that you are going through, uh, you're filming a rehab that you just did. You're posting about this rehab and you're shooting a video. You can put the entire video up on social media. You can put it up on YouTube or another platform. But you can also take that video and chop it down into snippets and send people to the longer version, send people to your website. So take that one piece of content and repurpose it. Now, when you use imagery for your platforms, you want to use branded images. You can have someone on Fiverr create a logo. You can have someone overlay those logos onto your to your content, or you can learn how to do that yourself, certainly. But you want to have branded images and branded content. One of the greatest things about social media, though, is, in my opinion, is your ability to build long-term relationships, which I have done successfully on Facebook. You build connections, you engage with these connections over time, and you get people to notice you when you do that. So it's not a one-way street. It's not here's content, content, consume my content. You want to go out to these people to what they are posting and you want to engage with them. Leave a comment, like it. If they have something great, share it. So it's a back and forth. It's a reciprocal type of thing. 
So here you have it. I've given you some practical ways of using social media for branding your real estate investing business, for marketing your real estate investing business. And this really doesn't have to be hard, but you need to have a plan. You need to have some sort of a basic plan, even if it's only I will hop in my Facebook group every other day and put something in there, or I will create two or three pieces of content, or I will pop in there once a day with a tip, um, something that I can share that has happened to me that would help people in their own businesses, share a quote. Uh, trust me, folks, it really doesn't have to be hard, but you do have to be consistent. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. I wanted to jump through this topic and not take too long, but do let me know if you have any questions. And look for a workshop on this topic of uh, marketing, of being different in the next few months. I'll be sure and let you know when I have it ready. And as always, thanks so much for listening to the show. If you like this show, please share it and leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. It helps people to find us and I would really appreciate it. So in the meantime, I will see you same time, same place next week. Bye for now.